Welcome to Mobile Must Have. My name's Andy, and in today's video, we are going to be installing a Pepwave Transit Duo in my RV. Now, as I said in the intro, we are installing this unit today on my RV, and you can see we're in a fifth wheel right now. In this video, we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step kind of instruction on how to install it. Uh, we are also going to be planning my particular installation to use a 7-in-1 uh, MIMO, uh, this one here, this, this antenna. Today, we are just going to focus and use the antennas that come in the PepWave. So if you're not installing a 7-in-1, that's fine. You will see how to get out of the box to fully installed um, in just a few minutes. Now, in the box, you will see it comes with a couple different sets of antennas and a power cord. So we have two sets of cellular antennas, as the Duo does have two cellular modems that can kind of run at the same time. Uh, and then we have a set of Wi-Fi antennas. Um, it does come with a GPS antenna, and I will say up front, this is the only one that is optional to install. If you're doing a 7-in-1, this kind of comes and it's really easy to do. Um, but if you're not going to do one of those 7-in-1 or 5-in-1 antennas, you actually you wouldn't need this, but it is it is kind of fun to be able to see your rig in the system. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to take everything out of the box like I have, and we're going to do our SIM card installation first. I find that easiest um, before we put all of the kind of the ears and antennas and stuff on it. All right, so let's get with the SIM cards. So first step with the SIM cards is to remove the dust cover. Uh, again, on this one, it's going to have two screws. Yours, if you're using like a, a, a BR1 Max or a Mini, um, which I've also used, those are just going to have one screw. The important thing about the SIM cards is to make sure you insert them the right way. Um, in the Duo, there's actually four independent slots. On most, you'll only have two. If you bought a SIM card from Mobile Must Have as well as your Duo, uh, you're going to have to pop it out of the uh, the card itself. Um, and so you can see this one I've already popped out. This is a Verizon card. Um, this is an AT&T card. Uh, the thing that's important is when you put it in to make sure it's the right way. And also make sure you're using a full-size card. Uh, if you're not using a full-size card, Mobile Must Have has uh, adapter kits on our website, again, link below is for that. You need to make sure it's in this standard format or the FF2 format. Now the actual uh, connector card itself or the SIM card itself will go in, in the first, the top slot will go face down and the bottom slot will go face up. To make sure it's inserted all the way, um, I've just kind of pushed in, you will hear a click. I don't know if that's audible on the camera or not, but uh, and then if you want to pull it out, you can push it in again and it'll kind of come back out. It's on like a little, like a spring. Um, so we will kind of push that in. Now, if I wanted to put in a second one, I could do it in two different places. I could put in a uh, kind of a backup SIM onto the same modem um, for this, so if, like a failover if I wanted to. Um, or I could just put on a whole second modem. It could always be running. Um, so I can do that again. So I'll just push this in. And then there you go. Now, again, if you want to get out, you push again, and they, they uh, come back out. Sometimes I have found that when I'm putting the SIM card in first, it's already compressed in. Um, so if you don't, so don't over push it. It's just, a, you know, just with one finger, you can kind of push it and get it pushed in. Um, very important to that step. All right. Once we have that all done, we can cover up the dust cover, and we are ready for the next step. All right. So now that we have the SIM card done, the next step is going to be to put on the antennas. Now on the, the Duo, there are lots of different antennas, um, and this is definitely the one with the most. Uh, so at the same time, it's pretty easy. Everything is labeled. Up at the top, you're going to see Cellular 1 and Cellular 2. Each of those have two antennas. Um, and then the bottom are for the Wi-Fi. The one in the middle on the top is for GPS. Um, if you're going to do a 7-in-1, each of these will have its own kind of cable, which we'll get to again in another video. Uh, so at this step, I'm going to install all the antennas. Now, each antenna at the very bottom does have the uh, what it is. So I just picked up the two, uh, 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so we know that it's the same. Now, the, where it goes for the Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. Both of the antennas are the same. Um, it's just that the Wi-Fi antennas will only go on the Wi-Fi spots, and uh, the cellular ones will only go on the cellular spots. So, so don't force them. If it does, if it's not going, double check that you've got the right, uh, the right one. 
and that will um, that will make it easier. It is very important that you install all of the antennas. Each antenna, well, although you might not be using a certain part or don't think you need a certain part, um, it's designed to have all the antennas there. So make sure you're installing it with, with all the antennas for its own purpose. Um, if you don't, you can have interference problems, you can have reception problems. That's honestly kind of hard to troubleshoot. So even if you don't think you're using it, um, it, is, it is important that all antennas get installed. The only one I'm comfortable saying I think you can skip is going to be the GPS one. Um, that one is not required for actual bandwidth or anything like that. All right. Now, in some cases, you can try to re-angle these if you want. With so many antennas, it can, I'm not going to lie, be a little tricky. It also depends on your setup. Um, for now, I think I'm just going to keep all of them straight up. And um, I might tilt these just because that's kind of fun. But again, it doesn't really matter. I've, I've been having these straight for a while, and it's fine. Now we're going to move on to power. There are two power options for all PEP Wave units. The first is a standard AC power. That would be something you plug in um, into a wall socket when you're on sure power. Um, and this is what I've been using in my Mini for probably 18 months or so, and we haven't really had any problems. Other than if we're boondocking or we're running off of batteries, uh, we have to run an inverter or something like that. It's just not very efficient. Um, for today's particular installation, we're going to run a DC power cable. Um, we're going to hijack some DC power off of some cables. Then using the DC cable accessory from Mobile Must Have, we will use that to connect directly to the Duo. Let's start that installation. So the plan for our install is to mount our PEP Wave unit behind the TV. Now in most cases, I think literally right behind the TV is where you'll put yours, and that's where mine is sitting now in a temporary spot. Our TV is actually on a full folding kind of cabinet space, so I want to put it in the cabinet behind there, uh, mainly due to the fact that will allow me to put my 7-in-1 antenna when I have that ready. Uh, it will be a much easier install for that. I'm going to try and be stealing power from my uh, stereo, which you can see kind of right there. If that doesn't work, there's a bathroom on the other side of that wall where we might tap into the, the power going to the fan. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll figure out the best way to get power. All right, so that's the location. Uh, now let's get to work. So at this point, what I'm looking for is a 12 volt power line that I can splice into. Uh, my first choice was to look at this bundle of wires. I didn't feel confident I could pick a good power wire and ground. They weren't clearly labeled. Um, so by pulling back this black box, I found a pass-through into my basement storage. Um, and in there, I know on the other side, um, you will see basically our main command center of, of wires. This is going to be very standard for a keystone. Um, that is labeled so I could find an aux 12 volt power and a 12 volt ground coming right out of this main unit and then I could just connect my main cables to those to those labeled wires. This seemed to work fairly well for me. For this phase, I do recommend removing the fuse that comes installed with that optional DC power kit. That way if any wires cross or anything and you didn't unplug the battery, uh, you won't blow that fuse right away. It kind of simplifies the install. Once everything is plugged into the PEP wave and you have uh, power set up back to the battery, if you've unplugged that, you can insert the fuse and you won't have any issues. Now that the power wire is installed, I know how far it will reach so I can get the correct placement of my PEP wave. I have picked this place specifically because I am going to be installing my 7-in-1 pointing antenna um, basically right above this point. Um, so for right now I'm going to keep kind of the stock antennas installed so I'll make sure there's enough room for them here. Um, but that is going to be where the antenna is coming down from. I also recommend mounting it before plugging it in, it just simplifies things. Uh, if you're using the DC power option, that whole port will basically come out, you can pull it out. Um, that, I found that easier to install the screws and make sure everything was tight on the kind of that mount itself, and then install the mount once the, the PEP wave was, was correctly screwed in and the wires were installed on the mount. It just seemed to be easiest for me. 
All right, and there you go. Now, what you're gonna look for is a red status light on the bottom. Uh, as soon as you connect the power, that, that light will turn on. That light will turn green in a few minutes once it has kind of booted up. You will also look for a Wi-Fi and cellular light. Those will turn green when they're on. Uh, when the cellular light is green, that means it is and it's found a cell tower and it's getting connected. And that will bring us to our next step of just showing you how to connect to the Wi-Fi that the PEP wave is giving off. Now that we have everything set up with the PEP wave physically in the hardware, let's go in and get you connected to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to be using a laptop today, but you can do this on your phone or a tablet. As long as you have a browser and you can connect to the Wi-Fi from the PEP wave, you should be able to do the next step without any problem. All right, so let's go to the computer. So first thing we're going to do is go up to the Wi-Fi and we are going to look for PEP wave and then a couple numbers. To know the right numbers, you're going to look at the serial number of your unit. That can be found on the back if you haven't mounted it yet. Um, however, if you still have the box, you can look at the back or the, the, the product thing on the box and that will tell you your serial number as well. So in our case, it is PepWave 4879. I'm going to click on that and it is going to pop up a password. The password is going to be the last eight digits of your LAN MAC address. That is on the back of the pep wave. It'll say AP password. Again, if you didn't mount, like we already mounted, I didn't take a picture, it's going to be on your box too. So have no fear. So in our case, it is DD4431201. All right. And to confirm you have a good connection, you can see up at the top, we have pep wave, our number, and then it's checked off saying we're connected to that particular network. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to get into the admin console. Uh, there might be a couple things you want to change. Say you want to change the password or change the, the Wi-Fi name. You can do that here. Um, if, you, if this is a little over your head already, we offer a service where we can help set this up for you. I will leave an email address in the description below so you can, you can check that out. And we are happy to help you um, here at Mobile Must Have. All right. So to get to the admin console, you're going to type in 192.168 dot fifty dot one you can see I've been there before we're gonna hit enter the password by default is going to be admin and the password by default is also going to be admin I hit enter and I'm gonna be logged in so from here we can see I put in my AT&T card um, I am getting three bars of ETEA that means I have multiple towers connecting to my uh, to my unit that's great that means I should have some pretty good speeds um, I have a, a WAN address if I'm going to actually, you can hardwire internet into this solution if you're stationary and you, you have that as an option. Um, my second cellular I could um, turn on by just bringing this up into my priorities and we can uh, watch that connect. Um, if I want to use campground Wi-Fi, um, I can do that too by pulling this one up. Um, with that one, once you get activated or once it finds a network, um, you can choose the network, put in its password. So on. So here we go. So I can put in like a wireless network. So here, so I've already connected to my RVC. This is just the, the network I'm at now. I can connect to that and uh, it'll show that it is on standby. Uh, my cellular to that one. If you see this message, this might mean you're having an issue with your actual data card itself getting connected. I've had this issue where I've had to call my carrier and give them like what device I'm using. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that's just the blocker is they're just not, the networks aren't talking the right way. If they are asking for any information, hit details here and they're probably going to be looking for the IMEI number. That's, that's, well, this is my number. So this is per device. Um, but give them your IMEI number and that might resolve um, this obtaining IP address kind of standoff you might see a device in. Um, I would say the devices connect within within two minutes typically, sometimes even faster. If you see that for longer than five minutes, there's definitely probably some billing issue. Make sure you've paid your bill. Uh, make sure it's connected correctly. If you're just upgrading from another device, again, it might be a device ID issue. All right, so there you go. So there's some of the kind of the high level basics. Again, if you have questions, reach out to us and support. Uh, we offer a service where we can kind of better help set you up on this. Thank you so much for watching our video today on our installation for the PepWave unit, and we hope to see you in a video again soon. Thank you.